Those blades turn, it cuts the cane at the bottom, and as it falls down, it goes to the top roller, which is what you see above. So it runs through here. This device up here is called a copper, and the main branch is possible to go to the middle. It branches everything that's not the, not the stock. Yep. Not the, all the green stuff on top, so you run these, it turns, all that stuff falls to the ground, and never goes to the bottom. Because that here, walking on the side, what would be right here is the fan you're seeing behind me. So as that fan comes up in the elevator, that fan is blowing at a certain RPM, and it blows the trash out of the machine, leaving just the billet, which is what cut uh, the links of the paint, to come out the elevator and into the car. That's it. So it runs all that through the wagons, and then the wagons go to the um, a lot of these running in those things go off alone as 22 of these machines. Yes, ma'am. So a cane harvester like this with all the new technology is around 475. So even these now, the, they run auto track, they run by themselves, they actually have their own systems that have optical images that look down on the cane map as it comes through the machine. It determines what bulk mass like a physical machine and what's trash. When it sees that, it revs up the engine, the fan turns faster to blow the trash out, and then when it sees a light spot, the fan goes back down, the engine speed drops, and with that system, they see about a four gallon per hour reduction. The designing of these harvesters, they do that in Thibodeau, Louisiana. John Deere has their own factory. John Deere has technology and all of the, the GPS and integrated solutions over the last four to five years. Is it an American company or is it German? John Deere. John Deere. That's an American company. Bowling, Illinois. Yeah. If you guys are done here, we'll move back. I want to make sure I take Jackson with me. Uh, yeah, he was being distracted by one person, so I just wanted to make sure uh, they weren't doing anything else. Oh, outside, uh, you'll notice they have a thinner tire than, say, the 9R. Ah, these can be used for lamp prep. Uh, the number on the hood denotes engine horsepower for gear on, on all of our tractors, so this is a 310 horsepower road clock. And that's more Yes, sir. And what this tractor would be used for is they will do light lamp prep work with these. And they can also use it for road They take the jewels off the front and they can leave jewels on the back and put the jewels on the front if they're looking for more ground contact and full power. So that's what this machine would be used for. Uh, this machine over here is an articulating lamp press tractor. And this is primarily uh, for disc, rippers, anytime you're build prepping for a new season. Uh, this machine here weighted out and probably around 35 to 28,000 pounds. Um, one of the big things that that we hear when it comes to different tractor manufacturers and pulling power isn't so much on the on the engine hood power. It's all about weight and ground contact, just like a bulldozer. And we ran into an issue, uh, this issue last year. One of our tractors was out there pulling a, it was a 32 foot disc, and the tractor was popping. And generally, that's it. That's right. So what they said was this tractor won't pull the disc, it's too weak. Well, we went out there and one of the first things we looked at is tire pressure. 
Yeah. If your tire pressure is above 20, 25 PSI, you're basically riding on a balloon and you're not putting that rubber on the ground. A PSI on a tractor like this, when you want to pull a big heavy disc in the field, you want to be around 15 to 18 PSI. Doesn't that's it. So it, it keeps the, uh, it's not so much the center of gravity, but if, when you start hopping, you lose your contact on the ground and the tractor has no ability to drift in the field. So that's things like that that are important to look at in the steps of the tractor to make it as it is. So what's the worst one on that one? 450. And the, the hitch on the back of these tractors, these are two point hitch. Most of the guys who draw them, what they mean, they hook to the draw bar. But they do have your uh, lift capacity of 20,000 pounds on the back of the tractor. For those of you that were at the chamber breakfast, and I mentioned the 8R that's fully autonomous, that's this machine. That deer just came out with in January. It totally drives itself everywhere. So. And that's so what it does. Not in these. These tractors, wow. they have all the technology on the GPS, but the autonomous is a kit that we can retro and put on any tractor, and that did just come out uh, this year, and that's what a lot of people are pushing for. With our labor issues we're having, uh, you know, cost of doing business, they want as, to operate as efficiently as possible, and autonomous is kind of where it's like. Well, and as mentioned at the chamber breakfast, the cost is significant to a farmer, right? Like this is an expensive machine, the cost of doing business, but the, the cost of the produce is not rising at the same rate as the cost of doing business. And when you've got out non-American vegetables or produce or things on the shelf that are competing at the same rate, same rate if not cheaper with less regulation. So when you see it and you think, oh, it's cheaper, but the, the, the American laws are not in place on those, on those vegetables. So it is vital and it's vital to stay uh, Self-sufficient as a country, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, how many drop Well, I can't really use this one as a uh, statistic because it does land prep, which is mainly one feature. One example I'll give you is when they plant lettuce out there, they bring in labor to go through and weed the beds. Very, very labor and out there weeding these beds walking through the field. You have to feed those guys, house those guys, take care of them. Yeah. They, they've got equipment now that are uh, automatic weeders that go behind the machine. The machine drives itself. All you need is an operator to start it and to make sure the data is correct and push the button. So you go from 150 guys and gals weeding these beds to a machine and a tractor and two people, an operator and one walking behind. How reliable is it on driving itself? Up on, the on the autonomous. Straight. So we have what they call geofencing. Yeah. Each tractors, uh, all of them have this capability on the John Deere platform. You create a geofence and it tells the tractor don't leave this area. If it does, it sends an alert to the operator or whoever's on that, that account. Well, and like you were telling me, the bed rows have gone from being a foot and a half down to sub one inch yep. of accuracy. Wow. So yep. they're, it's super reliable. And you know, you couple that with sometimes you get in these situations where you want the tractors to run slow. These have what they call IVT transmissions, where they can run under half a mile per hour significantly, and it's all on the scroll wheel. So it's just your thumb. You don't shift gears. You just bring it down, whatever speed you want, and this thing will creep through the field. What's the replacement cost on the tires? Yeah, the tires right now. Um, the most recent ones I did are a set like this on, and those are five uh, twenties on six twenties. With rims, you're around fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars per tire. Per tire. With, with the rims, for the whole set to repair. A whole set. That'd be eight. Eight. Yes. Eight How much is the one of the An eight R three ten retail on one of these is going to be probably around three eighty to four hundred. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, not I think it's 275. Move it off. You got a flame for us. Last year, you flamed for us. Not even your Rolls Royce contenders. <laughs> <laughs> we all have one of those. I saw a Rolls Royce SUV the other day. I live, huh? I live in Sugar Pond. I saw it come down the road. Like, That's an impressive looking vehicle. <laughs> I'd like to know how much that costs. <laughs> It's I think the rolls like 350. You know, the SUV. Yeah, uh, you know, during this, like during season for the equestrian world, you see some.